If you were to ask Call of Duty fans five years ago, who is the GOAT of Call of Duty? There would be one name at the top of almost everybody's list. He was a player who might not have always had the highest KD, but he saved his team on countless occasions. Nicknamed Three Rings as he was the first player ever to win three world championships, he was undoubtedly one of the smartest Call of Duty players of all time. And he was a key player in the two Call of Duty dynasties, so it's pretty obvious that there's only one player that we could be talking about here. This is the story of Damon Karma Barlow. Karma's first chapter began when he originally started playing Call of Duty in 2007 on the original Modern Warfare. And he was widely considered to be one of, if not the best player at World of War, but there was just a lack of community support. So he didn't get his break that early. And in fact, Karma's first competitive play started in Black Ops, where he placed top 12 in his first event. And he slowly improved over the year, finishing with a top five placing at the MLG National Championships in 2011. Like many pros at the time, Karma sat out in Modern Warfare 3, just due to the lack of support competitively. But the game that truly changed everything for Karma was the game after Modern Warfare 3. It was none other than Black Ops 2. I stated earlier that Karma was part of Call of Duty's two dynasties. But you could also argue Karma's Black Ops 2 team was kind of a dynasty. He joined Fariko Impact for the start of the season and they instantly had success. With two third place finishes at a Machinima Frag Cup and UMG Dallas in 2012, but Fariko wanted more. So they dropped Too Quick and John and they picked up two new players in Parasite and Miracles and just take a look at their next four events as a team. Karma and Fariko went on to win the next four events, including the Call of Duty World Championships. And they went on to win a whopping $430,000 between them in these events, which that's a lot of money now, but back then in competitive Call of Duty, this was a crazy amount. As with all good things in life though, their team split apart at their second place at the MLG Spring Championships in 2013 and a fourth place at Gfinity. Now, there were obviously internal issues with that Frico Impact team, but the one thing that was a constant was Karma's play. He was one of, if not the best player at that time period, and he was hungrier than ever. Karma was on the hunt for his second world championship. The one thing that you need to know most about Karma is he wanted to win at all times, no matter the cost. Most pros wouldn't leave their teams after a second place and a fourth place finish. Those are very solid and relatively successful events. But Karma knew with the issues internally that that winning streak was over and Frico Impact's time as a team was over. And Karma made a big roster move. He went from Frico to Envy, one of the top organizations at the time. And despite everyone in the community having very high expectations, it just didn't pan out the way that he thought it would. And I'm sure most fans thought it would. And you can see their results on the screen now. They were just mediocre. A few weeks into the Call of Duty Ghost season, his MV team placed six at the MLG Fall Championship in 2013. And this was the last straw. So he decided that he was going to make a roster move to Complexity. And Complexity comprised of Aix, TP, Crim6, and Karma himself. And this roster move was met with a lot of criticism because at the time, Complexity with Clayster was dominant. And Karma quickly proved to everyone why he's one of the best as Complexity went on to win their first two events together, UMG Philadelphia and something called Call of Duty Championships. In the space of a year, Karma became a two-time world champion and won $200,000 in individual prize money just from COD champs alone. And to cement their dominant status, they went on to win UGC Niagara where they dropped into the loser's bracket early and they ended up going 21 and two total map count to come back and win the event from losers bracket. The complexity team then switched to another organization. They decided to play under the Evil Geniuses banner. Despite a disputing bronze medal at the MLG X Games Invitational, they bounced back at MLG Anaheim in 2014. But unfortunately, this was then followed up with a top eight finish at Gfinity, which obviously didn't sit well with the players. And to make matters worse, the next event was UMG Dallas, which EG couldn't attend because Karma's wife had recently given birth, so he wanted to stay at home with her. And rumors were circulating at the time that Karma just wasn't happy being a part of the Evil Geniuses. And they ended up being true because he announced that he was leaving the team and he was going to be starting on another journey. And of course, this journey was Karma's hunt for his third world championship. Karma's third major chapter in his career is one that I'm sure you're all pretty much familiar with but there may be a few bits at the start that you didn't know. Like Karma was actually loaned to FaZe Clan after he announced that he wasn't happy with his EG team 
and they actually went on to win an event. That event was UMG Nashville in 2014, and then Karma moved on to Optic Nation at the start of Advanced Warfare, a team which, despite having very high profile players, just had poor placings throughout the year. And while Karma and his teammates had poor performances throughout the season, the Optic Gaming team had a super team, including Nadeshot, Skump, Krim6, and Formal, and they were just absolutely dominant, and they were the favorites heading into the Advanced Warfare Call of Duty Championship. But we all know what happened there. Optic Gaming flopped, and they didn't even place in the top six. Nadeshot accidentally pulled out the HBR, and because of that, he decided to retire. And this meant one thing, that there was an opening on the Optic Gaming roster, right? The A-team of Optic. And it's pretty obvious that the best player on Optic Nation, and quite frankly, one of the best players at Call of Duty at that time, was the first choice. And I mean, do I even need to show the success that Optic Gaming had with Karma? These are the placings since Karma joined the team up until the end of the Infinite Warfare season. It's pretty impressive, right? But the thing is, with the Optic Gaming team, they could have won another 100 events, but it would never have satisfied them if they didn't win the big one, if they didn't win the Call of Duty Championship. But this chapter has a happy ending because at the end of Infinite Warfare, the Call of Duty Championship, it was different. Optic, a team that was so dominant, but they just couldn't put it together for the big event of the year. Well, that wasn't a thing anymore. And instead of me telling you guys how special it is, just take a moment to listen to Courage's iconic commentary at the end of that event. What goes up must come down. And what followed, unfortunately, was a terrible World War II season and a mediocre Black Ops 4 season, which could have contributed to the fourth and final chapter of Karma. The worst thing to follow two disappointing seasons for Karma would be a complete switch up in the league and one of the worst Call of Duty games in competitive history, right? Well, that's exactly what happened because Call of Duty became a franchise league and Karma ended up on a team named Seattle Surge. Fun fact, I was also a part of the Seattle Surge. It was not a great time. In fact, I remember going into that season thinking how Karma didn't have a team because I viewed him as one of the greatest, if not the greatest Call of Duty player of all time. And he was kind of left over for the scraps. Uh, the Seattle Surge team, we had our sights on a different player or two different players, actually, I believe, that fell through last minute. And Karma was one of the players that was still available which when you really think about it and say it out loud, it's kind of, you know, confusing. How does that happen? And it didn't take Karma long for him to decide that this just wasn't it. Competing just wasn't it anymore for him. He'd already accomplished everything. He won three Call of Duty championships, multiple Call of Duty majors, which is amazing. But there comes a point in life where other things start to take priority, such as being a dad. And Karma officially retired from Call of Duty on June 3rd, 2020. And five years from now, when Simp and Ibiza win their fifth Call of Duty championship and become the undisputable Call of Duty GOATs, we all need to remember who the original Call of Duty GOAT was. The first to ever do the Call of Duty championship 3P, it's none other than Damon Karma Barlow.